Welcome to Ridge Point, and thank you so much for checking out this message. We're in a really exciting season these days in our church family. Our new building construction project is well underway. We're fully staffed with some really great leaders. Our fall programs are back up and running. And I think all of us just have a sense that God is at work and good things are on the horizon for our church family. Right now, we're going through a sermon series called Base Camp, where pastors Brent, Andy, and Joe are leading us through four weeks looking at our long-term vision and planning. If you've been wondering what Rich Point is up to and how you might be able to fit in, this is a great message series for you. Today, Pastor Brent is specifically honing in on our goal to reach more young adults in their 20s and 30s. And later, you'll hear from several young leaders from our church family sharing what they need the most from a church. We think you're going to leave today feeling really encouraged and excited about our future. So let's get to Pastor Brent and week two of our series called Base Camp. So we're in this series we're calling Base Camp. It's all about saying, okay, as a church, where are we going? How are we getting there? What are the values that are guiding us? And so uh, well, this is week two, Base Camp. So I'll say it again. I said it last week. This is complicated. A Base Camp is a camp at the base of a mountain, okay? And it's that place where the climbers can come, they can spend a few nights, they're getting acclimated, they're co collecting their gear, they're reviewing their final strategy for climbing the mountain, and so the base camp becomes a launch point, right, for the church. So we are at a base camp right now, we've got a mission ahead of us, and so we're asking these questions, what is our mission? Uh, the strategy is, how are we getting up the mountain to effectively pull off our, our, our mission, and what are the values? So that's where we're going. Uh, one of the anchor points is that this is how Jesus lived. I said last week, this isn't just a rah, rah, let's go get them church speech. This isn't just a TED talk. Uh, we are walking in the footsteps of Jesus who was was guided by a very clear mission to save the world, right? That was, his, that was his mission, just save the world, all right? His strategy was how he was going to do that. And he had a number of strategies, including he would die and rise again, okay? But then Jesus also had, and if you didn't listen to last week's sermon, be sure and catch it. It'll fill in some of the gap where I'm leaving you hanging. But Jesus had a clear mission, he had clear strategy, and he had clear values that, that guided him, kept him on the rails. So last week I said that our mission is given to us by Jesus. Like We don't choose what mountain we're going to climb. That's given. The Great Commission is called Matthew 28. It says, go and make disciples of all nations. We've summarized it with this phrase, we exist to help people find and follow Jesus. Okay, that's our mission. The strategy is how we're going to try to pull that off, right? And these next three weeks, today, next week, and the following, we're going to drop three rocks on you. It won't be painful, okay? We're going to drop three big rocks on you of three of our primary strategies. Last week, I also said these are the values. So we talked about the mission and the values last week. Our values, these are, this is the culture that guides us. We said it's prayer, risk, surrender, joy, authenticity, that to keep us on the rails of our strategy and our mission, we need this guiding culture. So the values are all about us. So today, I want to talk about one of those big rocks of our strategy, and that is to reach a specific demographic, that is the 20s and 30s. So as staff, along with leadership board, we've been talking, what's our long-term goal, strategy, uh, how are we going to get where we want to go? And we have come up with a, what we call a 2030, our 2030 vision. Okay, so I'm just going to read it. We envision a day where everyone who calls Ridge Point their home is passionately helping more and more people find and follow Jesus. 
while we will be marked, I love this, by a zeal to pursue Christ. So individually, like we're all chastened to become like Christ. While we will uh, be marked by a zeal to pursue Christ, while also impacting those in our circles of influence, and here it is, united around a common goal of reaching those in their 20s and 30s and young families for Christ. So if you didn't catch it, the 2030 is the year. And it's this age group, the 2030 age group. Um, This is one of the big rocks of our strategy. So right out of the gate, let me just say this and let's shut this door, all right? If you are 40 and older, we still care about you. Okay, just uh, like why did I need to say that? Except we've been talking about reaching the 20s and 30s for a while now and I have had a few people come up to me and I can't always read you so please just be more readable, okay? When you come up and they, they just come up and say, uh, Brent, does that mean I don't matter? And I just want to say yes because you're old. <laughs> but I don't. I, I don't always know how to read them and part of me just says, Really? Like, are you jabbing me or did, like, really you think that? And so, right out of the gate, everybody matters. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. If you're 40 and over, we love you, Jesus does, okay? And so, let's just do that, okay? Let's embrace this. For us to be successful, we could say, okay, we wanna reach everybody on the planet to help them find a follow Jesus. But honestly, we'll be more effective if we kind of put on the binoculars and focus in on a, on a specific group without, I mean, we're still gonna be womb to tomb, okay? If you're anywhere in there, we care about you, okay? But strategically, we are going to throw emphasis into trying to reach that demographic, which begs the question, is that a worthy strategy? Is that a noble strategy? Is that a good strategy? And it's not just about self-preservation as a church because it's true that any church that doesn't reach the next generation at some point is going to close its doors, right? But shouldn't there be a more noble motivation than just we don't want to die? That shouldn't there? Of course. So here's, here's one of the noble motivations for why we've landed on this. I want to get it right. There are so many people in their 20s and 30s who can contribute so much to our church right now with their leadership, vision, and energy. Like the 20 and 30 group are not the church of tomorrow, yet they're a little green behind the ears maybe. Yeah, they don't know everything, but neither do we, right? But this, this generation is an untapped resource for the kingdom of God. They are not the church of tomorrow, they're today. There are so many who are so gifted with so much energy and vision and leadership prowess already. Like, we need them now. Uh, I thought of Jeremiah, who was young, Old Testament, he was young when God said, hey, go be a prophet. <laughs> like, what if you woke up and God just said, hey, go be a prophet? Well, he was young. God said, Jeremiah, go be a prophet. And Jeremiah writes this. This is Jeremiah 1, verse 6 and 7. But I protested. Oh, no, Lord God. Look, I don't know how to speak since I am only a youth. Then the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a youth but you will go to everyone I send you to and speak whatever I tell you. Don't be afraid of anyone, for I will be with you. This is the Lord's declaration. So let's not underestimate this driving motivation to reach this demographic because they will make the kingdom of God better today. They will make our church better today. Here's a second noble reason that we need to chase after this this demographic. Americans in their 20s and 30s are walking away from the church and Christianity at unprecedented levels. They are walking away from not only the institutional church, but from Jesus at levels no other demographic is. Whether they grew up in the church 
or not, they are walking away. And we just, we just got to reach them. I mean, what, what's the alternative? Just watch them walk out and do nothing? No. We chase after them. Okay? And plus, the Bible actually says we should do this. So, that carries some weight. Uh, Psalm, 20, Psalm 78, verse 4 to 6 says, we will not hide these truths from our children. We will tell the next generation, there it is, about the glorious deeds of the Lord, about his power and his mighty wonders. For he issued his laws to Jacob. He gave his instructions to Israel. I love this line. He commanded our ancestors to teach them to their children so the next generation might know them. Even the children not yet born, and they in turn will teach their own children. And then Psalm 71 verse 18 speaks to a limited, a narrow demographic, old people with gray hair. It does not address old people with no hair, okay? But it says, Psalm 71, 18, even when I am old and gray, God, do not abandon me. Pause. Sometimes older people, the chronologically gifted, okay, Sometimes older people feel undervalued, unneeded, kicked to the gutter. Um, it is true that the older we get, <laughs> the less energy we have. Bodies wear out, the forgetter keeps improving, okay? Um, that's just a reality. Like, when you add enough years to your earthly life, you can't just jump out of bed and start running everywhere. So for those of you who are a bit older, do you remember the day when you could be on the floor and stand up without thinking? Like you just stood up. It, it, you just did it. Uh, now, we actually have to think, right? Now I'm on the floor with my grandkids and I need to stand up. I need to think about which limb I'm going to move first. And is there a couch nearby I can push up off of, you know? This is a reality, okay? But just because our, our energy is in a slight decline, just because our body is wearing out, the psalmist, he says, even when I'm in that place, do not abandon me. <laughs> this is gold. Then I will proclaim your power to another generation, your strength to all who are to come. You have breath today because you're going to, you're needing to invest into the next generation. That's why God made you alive today, right? This is, this is a critical part of our mission and our strategy as followers of Jesus. So, uh, I want to use my sweet voice here. For those of us who are old and gray, I'm among them. We don't retire from the Christian faith, Okay? And we never, ever say, I've served my time. It's time for them to serve. Those are not words that should come out of a Christian's mouth. You might serve differently. You might serve a few less hours. But we, as followers of Christ, we do not retire from the Christian faith. We do not retire from service. We do not say, I've served my time. It's time for the next generation to pick up the baton. Good grief, I've not. No, that is not the posture. We, we have breath today because God has called us to invest in the next generation. Now, having this strategy will change the way we do some things around here. What good is a strategy if it doesn't guide us, right? It's just print on a paper then. Meaningless. So a couple examples, not to, to scare you, but a couple examples. So we don't want to spend 15 minutes in announcements every Sunday. We're a family and we have stuff going on, we wanna communicate that. But our goal in this room is not announcements. Our, our goal is to worship the one true God and be taught and motivated to go out and live, live for him. Okay, that's, that's the purpose of this meeting right here. And so when we have a choice with a limited amount of time for making announcements, we're just going to emphasize uh, events for 20s and 30s more than the rest of us. 
It doesn't mean you're not important. We'll find other ways to promote your activities. But that's, that's an example of how this strategy will change things, okay? If there's limited rooms and there's an event for 20s and 30s group and an event for some older people, like which one, I mean, we're gonna do our best to serve everyone, right? But these are the decisions that will change because of our strategy, okay? Now, the good news is that this thing is already working, this emphasis on the 20s and 30s. So uh, for years, we've had a young adult ministry for years and years and years. Um, but over the past couple of years, we have poured a lot of time and energy and effort into this 2030 age group, trying to reach them, nourish them, feed them, grow them. Kyle Goings, our student ministries, uh, Pastor and Ty and Lori Harrington. I just a shout out to those three. Ty and Lori have thrown along with Kyle just buckets of hours into the uh, this young adult, the 20s and 30s ministry. And well, so on Sunday mornings we have two groups meeting. We have the uh, 2030 at 9:30. That's a Sunday school class, but I love that title. And Coffee and Jesus, another cool title. Two Sunday school classes, all right? And on Sunday mornings, we have over 50 people coming in that age group, like, like this 20 and 30 group. And that's more than we've ever had in recent memory, certainly, uh, of reaching these folks, okay? And then during the week, we have a Tuesdays at the table, which is a Bible study and community time for mostly singles. And then we have a Wednesday, Strengthen Your Marriage. And on, on a Tuesday and Wednesday, we have over 60 people in their 20s and 30s coming. Like, God has already blessed us. And God is going to continue to bless us as we strategically love everybody, okay? We care about it, but as we strategically set our binoculars, you know, our focus on 20s and 30s. And I want you to just get a sense of the heart of some of half a dozen here ridge pointers in their 20s and 30s. You're going to enjoy watching this. Hey, my name is Drew and I've been coming to Ridge Point for about a year. Uh, I'm a lieutenant in the United States Air Force, and that's how I found my way to Wichita. And in the past couple of months, I've been serving on staff at Ridge Point as a resident. Hey, I'm Nathan, this is my wife, Amy, and we've been coming to Ridge Point for about 10 years. Hi, my name is Becky Spar. I've gone to Ridge Point most of my life. Uh, right now I have the opportunity to be on staff one day a week as a resident, um, just learning what it's like to work in a church. We are Brent and Natalie Ayersman. Uh, we've been married for just over two years. And uh, so that's about how long we've gone to Ridge Point uh, together as a married couple. I think for me, what I need in a church is first and foremost, um, a place that leads me to the presence of Jesus. Also for me specifically, as a single woman who actually happens to have some leadership and ministry capacity, I'm looking for a place that will invest in me and in my gifts and give me opportunities to lead. I, can't, I want a place where, where people who are more mature in their faith are feeding into me then I also want a place where I can go and discuss my own spiritual life with other people who are in a similar stage of life as me. So for me, I really want a community with young moms because it's so different raising kids now than it was when we were growing up. Just knowing um, how to raise kids in this day and age is really important to me. What we need from church is, I think first and foremost, a really strong sense of community, a place where we feel like we can go and we belong and we fit in. Uh, something we've always wanted at a church is a place to grow and I can really see a lot of growth in Ridgepoint. We also want somewhere that is steadfast in its beliefs and somewhere that is not afraid to say the truth about the Bible. For my friends outside of the church, society, media, the political climate even, 
expect so much out of you. I think so many people just want a place where they can just be themselves and be accepted where they are. A lot of our friends that don't go to a church, they're looking for that sense of community and friendship, but I think they're also looking for just a place of hope that they can come and there's so much in our news that can drag you down. So I think a place where people can come and feel encouraged and hopeful is really important um, for our generation. I think uh, a lot of people who are my age and are single uh, still feel like the church is waiting on us to grow up. And I think so much of what we're, we've been taught growing up is your life starts when you get married and your single years are used for preparing for marriage. But if I'm never going to get married, I don't want to have had wasted like these 29 years of my life uh, not using my gifts. I think my friends who don't go to church anywhere would need somewhere that was very accepting. Um, not necessarily accepting of sin, but just accepting of where everybody's at in their life. I think a lot of my friends outside the church now, uh, most of them have actually probably had church in their past. Uh, and most of them probably had either a negative experience or not enough of a positive experience to merit them coming now. They know about God. I don't think they're offended by God as an idea, but I do think the, the stereotypical Christian that's in the media is offensive to them. I think it would require earning some trust or just, yeah, making it feel like a safe place for people to go who have no idea what's gonna happen on a Sunday morning. I would say one of the biggest stereotypes about church people is they're judgmental and um, Obviously, that's not where we should be coming from, in my opinion. I think we should be coming from a position of love and um, acceptance and um, just kind of letting them know that, hey, we're here to live life with you. And I think it's important that they know that. And it's hard to get people to kind of get to that point unless you have a good relationship with them. Part of it is some people's hearts are so callous to the idea of religion, especially with all of the political angst lately that is, you know, religious in nature sometimes, um, that it's hard to get them in the door of something even remotely close to that. And so if we can demonstrate that what we are doing here is different, that we're genuinely about loving other people as Christ has loved us, I think that we could really fill a need for a lot of people who are looking for something different. There's a standard that our generation has had to live up to social media and we have all these comparisons that you have to be a certain mom or be a certain dad or so I think our generation tries to just show people that grace and give them an opportunity to be real and not just have this sort of fake persona that we put out on the internet that we hope people believe. I think something that I see in common amongst yeah, my peers is that we're longing for purpose. I think our generation is searching for meaning, maybe more so than any other generation has ever had to. And I think a lot of people struggle with so many things, depression, anxiety, fear, and just not really knowing where to go to find that answer. Somebody who is unchurched that is looking for those things would need to feel like they could bring all of that to the table, all of their anxiety, all of the things they have going on to their, their lives, be able to bring it with them because there's not a lot of places you can go to get rid of that kind of stuff in a healthy way. Yeah, something I think that people my age need is just to be in a place that's saturated with truth and stability. Um, yeah, we live in a society in a time that uh, it's kind of this you do you, there's no firm foundation, there's no truth, it's all relative. And so I think coming to a place like Ridgepoint that's really firm on biblical truth is really just important and valuable. I think one thing that unchurched people our age might enjoy from church is a sense of what is right or wrong um, in a world where any amount of things might seem right or okay. Um, kind of coming to church and seeing, oh, well, this is what is actually right. This is the absolute truth. Uh, yeah, I think that's something that is also important that unchurched people wouldn't get somewhere else. 
I would say, you know, kind of after you graduate college, you're still trying to figure out life. And I think I can speak on behalf of my friends when I say this too, um, that we don't know what we're doing <laughs> in life, in our faith, in our relationships, and anything. And Google can't tell us any everything that we need to know either. Our generation is a very collaborative generation. We want mentors, we want counselors, we want people more mature in their faith to come alongside us and build us up so that we can be the most effective people that we can be, the most efficient people that we can be. Mentorship for someone like me just looks like friendship with someone who's lived a little bit longer than I have. I think I look at Ridgepoint and I see a lot of even just like really successful career minded people who have a lot to offer people my age, both in and outside of this church. Having other other groups that can teach life skills or how to handle life situations is so important. And I don't think, yeah, the churches focus on that enough. I know Brent and I have been a part of the, yeah, financial, marriage, like whatever the church could give us, we will take it. <laughs> I think something that people my age really value is authenticity. And so when it comes to a big flashy service or like loud dancey worship music, I think sometimes that can come off as fake or a performance. Smaller might actually be better in a lot of cases for my generation who wants that more intentional, focused, relationship-oriented, genuine relationships within the church. I can watch sermons, listen to podcasts whenever I want, but I feel like the real growth happens when I can come along other people and discuss these ideas and how the Holy Spirit's speaking to us. One of Brent and I's biggest things that we want to show everyone that we interact with is just kindness and community and just bringing people into our lives and just accepting them and creating that safe space that we hope at some point opens a conversation about Jesus and that we can reflect Jesus in our lives that way. I think that is one of the biggest blessings that we can provide and that we have is being able to show people what church can be outside of the walls of the actual building of church. Like we can, we can show people Jesus in a new way, I guess. I feel like it's really important for our generation to show that Christianity is still relevant in everyday life. It's not just for grandma and grandpa who went to church wearing a suit and a tie and you know the nicest dress that they have or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, Christianity is still relevant, it's still important to us, and we feel it's so important that we live it out in our day-to-day -day life, mm -hmm. showing people our age that it's not scary, it's not just a bunch of rules. It's important and it's heartfelt and it's meaningful for us, for our life. The obstacle to overcome to get people from my generation to buy in is steep. But if we can, if we can make that happen, if we can be intentional with it, uh, then their investment back into what they've signed up for, from what I've seen, is very high. That's uh, what happened to me personally. I was looking for a church. I came here. I met several people who were passionate about what was going on here, and I really felt connected to the mission and the heart behind what was happening here. And so I came in and I immediately wanted to serve. I immediately wanted to get involved in whatever ways I could. There isn't a societal expectation for people to go to church anymore. And so if we can overcome that lack of an expectation, if we can motivate people to want to come every Sunday, and then I think that the people who want to come to church but just haven't found that home yet, once they do, then their investment is very high. Doesn't it make you proud of that, that age group? Uh, they really do have so much to offer us. And uh, so, all right, we, we like to help you know what you can walk out and how you can take the sermon home with you. So I got three quick things. One is for everybody, and then a second one for the 20s and 30s, and then the third one for uh, the chronologically gifted. That is 40 and over, okay? So this is for everyone. Can we just pray?
Like, so last Sunday, I, I challenged us to pray for Ridge Point every day, every week. And I know there are a bunch of you that pray for this church family every week, multiple times. But I say, that is not wasted prayer to pray for your church home. And I'm saying, can we pray for the 2030 generation? Like, I, this is not guilt, this is not, okay, I'll come, you know. I'm just saying, when's the last time you prayed for those in their 20s and 30s? Like, can we, can we lean in? Don't underestimate the power of prayer for this, this demographic. And if you're in the 20s and 30s, like, pray for you. Pray for your generation. Pray for your impact. Pray for our church as we try to say, how can we find and help these, this generation find and follow Jesus? All right, let's pray. Now for the 20s and 30s. I would just say don't underestimate uh, what you can do now. Take risks, volunteer, seek out a mentor, um, vol- uh, serve somewhere. Um, you, are not, you are not the church of tomorrow. Are, have you learned everything? No. Are there a bunch of people who have lapped you a few times and they got a few miles behind them and they got some wisdom to share with you? Yeah. And I know you 20s and 30s, you're clamoring for people to just invest in you. Not even a mentor that feels so formal, but it, somehow just for people to be a friend. And so I'm just saying, take a risk. Don't underestimate your current impact, okay? And then to those of us 40 and over. Can we make a commitment to try to both influence and be influenced by? Doesn't that feel right? Like, what might happen if you stunned a couple 20-year-olds, 30-year-olds, and said, hey, let's go out for lunch uh, today? Like, that might actually work. We just get to know them. And not that you have to sign up for anything, but that you take, a, we, myself, take initiative to say, I would love to influence someone in that demographic, the 20s and 30s, and I'd love to learn from them because believe me, you can learn from them, okay? So pray, take risks, take initiative, uh, invest in each other's lives, we will make a difference. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you gave your son a mission and his primary strategy was to go to the cross and to die and rise again that would pull off the mission of saving the world. So thank you for that. Thank you for the values that help guide him. Father, I thank you for what you have done and what you will do with this big rock strategy that you have laid on our hearts to to reach the 20 and 30 uh, demographic. Um, I pray over them, I pray for courage, I pray for risk, I pray for surrender. Uh, I pray that, that you would give them a confidence that they sometimes lack as that generation where they're always going to Google, what do I do here, what do I do here, that they would understand that there's another thing in addition to Google, right? That they can come to you, they can come to the church, and I pray over this demographic, I pray over this body here that we would unite around this common mission because all we're trying to do is walk in the footsteps of Jesus who cared about people. So thank you, Father, for your blessing, and we We want to be a blessing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. You're a great church. Come back next Sunday, all right? Thanks again so much for joining us today, whether you're watching online or listening to our podcast. If you're watching live or sometime early in the fall of 22, we just recently relaunched all of our fall ministries here at Ridgepoint. So whatever your age or stage of life, we have a group or a class designed just for you. Our kids and student ministries are back up and running on Wednesdays and Sundays, and adults are always welcome to check out any of our ongoing Sunday school classes, life groups, Bible studies, or young adult 2030 groups. Head over to ridgepointwichita.com fall for all those details. And if you prefer to engage with us more online, I invite you to dig a little bit deeper wherever you're watching or listening right now. Our sermons are super bingeable, so go ahead and fire up whatever message comes up after this one. 
or to be, be sure to subscribe on YouTube and take a look around to see what other content we have available. If there's ever anything else that we can do for you, give us a follow on your favorite social network and send us a direct message. Any of our pastors or ministry leaders would be happy to pray with you or to chat about various ways that you can take a next step in your faith journey. Thanks again for being here today and we hope to catch you again real soon.